Welcome to our presentation on post-processing for individual fairness. I am Felix Peterson and this is joint work with Deb Mukayi, who has contributed equally, as well as our advisors Yu Kai Sun and Mikhail Jurochkin. Fairness is a prominent topic of modern research, as several widely used AI algorithms are biased against certain groups of people. There are two popular notions of fairness, group fairness and individual fairness. Group fairness means that algorithms should be fair across all groups, whereas individual fairness is based on the simple concept that similar individuals should be treated similarly. While there has been a lot of research on both fronts, usually it is extremely expensive to retrain a large AI model like BERT from scratch if we find it to be biased. Therefore, it is desirable to achieve fairness by post-processing the outputs of a biased model in contrast to retraining the model. Post-processing substantially reduces the computational cost of enforcing fairness, which also has a significant environmental impact, especially for large language models such as BERT. Although enforcing group fairness via post-processing is a well-researched topic, enforcing individual fairness via post-processing is relatively less explored. This is the motivation for our work, and in this presentation we will show you a simple method for post-processing outputs, which requires only a small computational effort and has proper theoretical guarantees. Let's start with a simple example to motivate our algorithm. There are five candidates for a programming job with the programming language Python. Alice has experience in Python and C++. Bob has experience in other languages. Charlie has the same qualifications as Alice. Dave knows Python. And Eve knows JavaScript. A biased model has suggested to consider Charlie and Dave, but to exclude Alice. However, from the qualifications we can see that Alice, Charlie and Dave are similar because they all have experience in Python, which is the job requirement and one should not prefer one over the other. An intuitive way of quantifying the similarity is via a graph representation. Imagine the five candidates are nodes of a graph and we put an edge between the nodes if they are similar. The edges are weighted with respect to their degree of similarity. The degree of similarity may either be inferred from annotations or via a fair metric on the input space. We use a graph Laplacian regularizer to enforce individual fairness. Now we will present our algorithm for post-processing, which we call glyph for graph Laplacian individual fairness. Suppose y hat is the output of some bias model that we want to post-process. We create a similarity matrix W and from that create a Laplacian matrix L, for example via L equals D minus W, where D is the degree matrix. After that, we solve the following optimization problem and store our post-processed predictions in F hat. First part of the equation ensures that F hat has a high prediction accuracy and the second part makes the output fair. As this is a nice quadratic optimization problem, it has a closed form solution. As we can see, we need to invert a matrix, which can become difficult if the dataset is very large. Therefore, we include a scalable large scale algorithm based on coordinate descent. The presented least squared loss is useful in regression settings, whereas other losses like cross entropy are more useful in classification settings. Therefore, we extend our algorithm for classification settings. If you are interested in more details on these extensions, please see our paper. Note that the graph interpretation yields a local notion of individual fairness, as only connections between similar individuals are considered because these are the ones that are most important, while connections between distant individuals, such as Dave and Bob, are ignored as they might not be as important. Let us now give a more detailed intuition about the differences between the local notion of individual fairness and the global notion of individual fairness. We consider a simple one-dimensional problem where x is the input and y is the output of our model H. Here, the blue line corresponds to our model H. The points on this line are our data points. Now, let us fix an input x1 for demonstrative purposes. As global individual fairness requires the function to be Lipschitz on the entire domain, the ratio between the output distance and the input distance must be bounded by the Lipschitz constant L for all other points x2. 
We draw a dashed line for the ratio and mark the regions that would violate this constraint with red, while we mark the regions that conform with this constraint green. As we can see, the yellow points violate the global IF constraint. Let us now compare this to local individual fairness. Local individual fairness requires only that those points which are close to x1 in the input space satisfy the Lipschitz constraint. We display this local constraint for approximity of 1 and mark the regions which would not satisfy this constraint in red, while we mark the regions satisfying it in green. Note that here the yellow points satisfy the individual fairness because they are far away from the green points and thus are not considered similar. There are two benefits of local individual fairness. As there are fewer constraints, the optimization problem becomes more feasible and using our algorithm we demonstrate a closed form solution for local IF. Additionally, as fewer constraints have to be satisfied, fewer modifications of the predictions are necessary, which helps preserving the prediction accuracy. On the other hand, a practitioner should also be careful, because if too many pairs of data points are ignored, the notion of local IF may not produce a desirable result. In our experiments, we will see that enforcing local IF yields better individual fairness while also maintaining a higher prediction accuracy than enforcing global IF. Let us now continue with the experiments. We start with a sentiment prediction experiment, where our goal is to classify words as having a positive or negative sentiment. The model we post process is a small neural network trained on GLOF word embeddings of respective words. We evaluate the model on a set of names and observe that it assigns strong sentiments to names. This is undesirable and an individually fair model should not assign sentiments to names. Further, we observe that there is a race gap between names typical for Caucasian and African American ethnic groups, which is also unacceptable. We post-process the baseline model using three methods. First, as an additional baseline we propose a method that fulfills all global IF constraints via a convex optimization in CVXPy, which we term IF constraints. This method is much slower than our glyph algorithm and is not scalable and therefore only available for the sentiment experiment. Next, we use two variants of our glyph algorithm to post-process the predictions. The unnormalized graph Laplacian glyph as well as the normalized random walk graph Laplacian glyph NRW. In this first plot, we display the trade-off between individual fairness and test accuracy. We measure the individual fairness via the standard deviation of scores, which should be as small as possible, as the scores for all names should be neutral. We can observe that the baseline is very unfair and that all methods can significantly improve upon the baseline even without losing accuracy. Additionally, we see that the local IF methods GLYF and GLYF NRW achieve a much better fairness accuracy trade-off than the global IF constraints method. In the next plot, we consider the race gap, that is the average difference in scores between names of different ethnic groups. Again, we observe that the baseline model behaves unfairly. All methods improve upon the baseline. GLYF and GLYF NRW achieve significantly better performance in terms of fairness and accuracy. In fact, the race gap is almost entirely closed and notably for Glyph NRW, the race gap has even an opposite direction. With a drop of less than 1% test accuracy, we can achieve a reduction of the race gap by a factor of 50. Finally, we consider violations of global individual fairness constraints that our method, which enforces local individual fairness, produces. The histogram displays the violations of global IF constraints that correspond to a level where the convex optimization method drops by 6% in accuracy and thus this is a strong constraint. We use predictions that we post-process using our glyph method and which achieve a 95% test accuracy which is very close to the baseline. We find that names almost always have small fair distances while the global IF constraint violations that occur almost always have large fair distances. In addition, we find that there are basically no violations of the global IF constraints for the names. This means that enforcing local IF also enforces global IF for the set of names, which are the data points we care about. This is because if the inputs are close to each other with respect to the fair metric, both notions of IF are similar. Next, we explore how our method performs on debiasing large language models, specifically fine-tuned BERT models. For this, we use two datasets. First, 
We use the BIOS dataset from the RTAGA, where a biography is given and the occupation should be predicted. And second, we use the toxicity dataset from the Toxic Commons Classification Challenge on Kegel. For both tasks, we measure the balance, test accuracy as well as fairness via the prediction consistency. This can be seen for BIOS on the left as well as for toxicity on the right. For the prediction consistency, we create counterfactuals for which we swap the gender in the biographies and for toxicity, we replace the identities such as male, female, Christian, gay, LGBTQ among 45 others. A prediction is considered consistent if it is the same for the other gender or the same for all 50 identities. A larger prediction consistency means that the model is more fair as it does not discriminate based on the respective protected attributes. We post-process the baseline using our Glyph and Glyph NRW as well as the Sensei Sensitive Set Invariance for Enforcing Individual Fairness method. Sensei is an in-processing method, that is, it requires retraining the model, which makes it more expensive than post-processing. On both datasets, we observe that the prediction consistency using our method is significantly better than for Sensei and that it can be achieved at a low drop in accuracy. Specifically, with a drop of only 1.2% accuracy, we can achieve increasing the prediction consistency from 94.2 to 98.8%, which is a substantial improvement. Cliff NRW improves by more than 1% over the Sensei method and is computationally less expensive at the same time. On the toxicity dataset, we observe a similar behavior where we improve by 23% over the baseline and by 7% over Sensei. At the same time, our model test accuracy drops by only 0.6%. Now, I will give the word to Deb, who will discuss the theoretical aspects of our work. Thank you, Felix. Now, I will talk briefly about the theoretical aspect of our paper. In global IF, the Lipschitz constraint must be applied on all pair of observations on the input space, whereas in local IF, we only care about those pairs for which the fair distance is small. The first difference between the definition of global IF and the local IF is that we are replacing the supremum by limb sup. We are only considering those pairs for which the fair distance is small. There is one other relaxation. The relaxation is expectation. In case of global IF, the condition must be imposed on all pairs of input space, whereas in local IF, we need this condition to be satisfied on an average, on expectation. If some point has very low probability of being observed in the input space, then we do not want for that point to be fair. So that's why we only want our ML model to be fair on an average. So now I will give you an example of a fair metric which satisfies this local IF property. This fair metric is a Mahalanobish fair metric, which is learned on the input space or any transformation of the input space under some fair constraint. So that if we know there are some direction of X which are heavily biased towards any protected group or non-informative for my task, then sigma should give smaller weight to that direction, whereas it will give larger weight to the old relevant direction. So our output is on a real line and with the metric is the absolute value of the difference. Then we can see that our local IF condition, which is on the left side of the equation, is bounded by a simple version of it which is a uh, next square root of sigma inverse times gradient of hx. If the right hand side is bounded, then obviously left hand side is bounded. And from our definition of local IF, we can conclude that this metric, Mahalanobish metric, actually satisfies local IF. If you use the Mahalanobish fair metric to create a Laplacian regularizer, then under certain scaling, the limiting regularizer satisfies local IF constraint. So there are several ways to create the Laplacian matrix, but we here give you example of two such Laplacian matrices. I'm just going to give you the result and its implications. If you are interested for more, please go check our paper. So what we have proved is that under certain scaling, the limit of the Laplacian regularizer is effectively the term which is very similar to the upper bound on our Mahalanobish fair matrix that we presented in our previous slide. If the scaling matrix has minimum eigenvalue bounded away from zero, that means sigma to the power minus half has finite operator norm, and the gradient of the classifier is finite, then in a limit, the graph Laplacian regularizer actually satisfies the local IF. And therefore, our method is effectively implementing local IF and is making the output more fair. Thank you very much for your attention. If you are interested, please check out our paper. 
Our source code with all experiments is publicly available on GitHub. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe for more ML research videos. If you want to find out how to combine classic algorithms and AI, check the linked video.